the first time that we worked together with the community law center was actually with the African, or then it was the Southern African Moot Court competition. We later on presented the Moot Court competition in the UWC, but in 1992, this competition actually started. And it started in Zimbabwe, of all places. And at that time, it was Peniel Maduna and Kader Asmal and uh, Dala Omar and others, together with Jeremy Sarkin, you know, that had been instrumental in making this event happen. And it started small, but it really grew to the kind of event that now is a landmark of the African um, human rights calendar. So yeah, I think, I think very fondly of those years, you know, when we, we were so privileged to, to be inspired by the likes of these people who were then part of this first moot court competition that we organized um, way back in 1992. are 14 universities every year there are 30 students coming in from all around Africa and from the outset you know the community law center was like an anchor of this, this partnership and I think you know it wouldn't have been what it is today if it hadn't been for for this very productive uh, partnership the reason why people have always fought students have always fought to have this as the option was the academic excellence that um, UWC and the community community law center brought to the to the to the program there was always uh, very exciting uh, academic options, socioeconomic rights, the rights of the child, you know, Nikus Taitler presenting constitutional criminal justice and increasingly now also decentralization and how that fits into Africa. So that academic excellence, I think, was, was one of the main reasons for this collaboration being so productive. Yes, I think that, you know, the Community Law Center is a place where students experience great warmth and uh, it's like a little aberration in a way because it is not a xenophobic place. It's a place of African students. It's a place of openness. In a way, the Center for Human Rights is also like a little island in the University of Pretoria or Pretoria. So that is also something I think we have in common. But that is always what I get, the warmth, the hospitality, the academic excellence. You know, among our students, the students on the master's program who come to UWC and the Community Law Center are the ones who are really serious about academics. So this is the association one has with this institution that it is sound academic. That also led to the big challenge, I think, to the Community Law Center after 1994, as we all know, you know, that um, they had to account for the fact that so many of these illustrious figures were then taken up in politics and uh, it had to find its, its, its niche in the, in the South African landscape. But I think it did so, so very, very well because it um, had to then become like more academic but still activist, you know, informed by politics but not only political. How does it um, remain relevant in South Africa? How does it find its, its position? And like for all of us, it's a matter of finding a location in South Africa, doing what is relevant in respect of South Africa, but also reaching out to Africa. So kind of merging one's focus on these two um, domains and then also being both critical and activist, if you like, but also at the same time constructive and engaged with the government. Um, these are challenges that all NGOs, all civil society organizations face. But I think the Institute is very well placed to actually deal with that because of its location as an academic institution within an activist world. And that is really an exciting challenge, but also something that I think really needs to uh, be cultivated for the benefit of the immediate community here, the broader South African and the African uh, uh, community at large. You know, in terms of moving forward, I think the Community Law Center perhaps can, um, you know, explore uh, broadening its uh, substantive focus as an institute. I think there is always a need to uh, engage on the issues of constitutionalism in Africa and in South Africa specifically. This is a time of challenge and the institute should, I think, focus on bringing academic acumen to bear on the very real political problems um, that we have in South Africa, so that one has informed you know, opinions uh, expressed by academics who are aware of the challenges and has, have an activist outlook, but still stay, stay legitimately anchored within the uh, broad parameters of scholarship.